In this sub-lesson, we are going to see how to implement spanning tree protocol on Cisco Nexus switches. For the demonstration purpose, we have a topology with five Nexus switches. We have NX1, NX2, NX3, NX4, and NX5. There are two links between NX2 and NX3. We'll initially begin with just three Nexus switches, and then we'll see the difference when we add two more switches. So we'll begin with NX1, NX2, and NX3. Let's now look at NX1. For enabling spanning tree protocol on Nexus switches, you don't need any special feature configuration. Spanning tree is enabled by default. So let's first see how many VLANs or what VLANs are pre-configured on the switch. Show run VLAN. So right now, we only have VLAN 1 that is available or configured on the device. Let's enable a couple of VLANs. So VLAN 2 and 3. We configured these two VLANs, and we are saying if we want to set NX1 as the root bridge for the VLAN 2, we can configure the command VLAN spanning tree VLAN 2 priority 4096. Yes. So the spanning tree VLAN for the spanning tree priority for VLAN 2 is now set to, to 4096. Remember, the lowest is preferred, and the priority value is always set in the multiple of 4096. Let's go ahead on switch 2 and switch 3, and let's enable a spanning. Let's enable VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. VLAN 2, 3. And on NX3, we say VLAN 2, 3. Let's do show on VLAN, and we have uh, VLAN 1, 2, 3 enabled on it. OK, the next step, what we are going to do is we are going to enable trunking on the ports connecting NX2 and NX3. So we go into the config mode and interface Ethernet 1 slash 1 hyphen 2, switch port, switch port mode trunk, and we say switch port trunk allowed VLAN 2 comma 3. If you want to add more VLANs later, you can always run the command switch port trunk allowed VLAN add and specify the VLAN that you want to add. But for now, we have VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. And we say no shut. Then we go on to NX2. And on the interface, so let's see what interfaces we have. So show CDP neighbor. We have two interfaces connecting NX3, and we have one interface connecting NX1. So Ethernet 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3 we need to enable. Let's shut down NX4 for now. So we say interface Ethernet 1 slash 4, shut down, and we do the same thing on NX3, show CDP neighbor, and we say interface Ethernet 1 slash 4, shut down. So we are shutting down the interfaces connecting NX4 and NX5. So on NX2, we go into Ethernet interface Ethernet 1 slash 1 to 1 slash 3 and say switch port, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 2 comma 3 and no shut. The interface is already in no shut state, so we should be fine. And we go on NX3 and say interface Ethernet 1 slash 1 hyphen 3, switch port, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 2 comma 3. And we should be good here as well. Since we have now configured all the three switches, let's now take a look at the spanning tree for VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. On NX1, if we look at the spanning tree for VLAN 2, show spanning tree VLAN 2, we will, the first thing we notice that is the priority is set to 4098. Wait, remember, we set it to 4096. The priority value is calculated by setting the priority value plus the VLAN ID. So 4096 plus VLAN 2 becomes 4098. The address of the system MAC of NX1 is 0CB5-5242-F807. 
And this is selected as a root bridge because of the lowest priority. Remember, lowest is preferred in spanning tree. We can also see the hello time and the max age set time interval along with the forward delay. Since this is selected as the root bridge, Ethernet 1.1 and Ethernet 1.2 are selected as the designated forwarder and they will be in forwarding state. Let's now go to NX2 and look at the spanning tree for VLAN 2. Show spanning tree VLAN 2. In this output, you will notice that the root priority is 4098 and the root is selected 03B5-5242-F807. This ID, this MAC address is of NX1. Remember, this is own system MAC address and the root bridge MAC address. So here, we learn about who is the root bridge. Since this is selected as the root bridge, the interface Ethernet 1 slash 1 that is connecting to the root bridge is selected as the root port. So in this output, we can see the role of the port is selected as root, and it is going to be in forwarding state. Similarly, on NX3, if we do show spanning tree VLAN 2, we will notice the same thing. We have the root bridge, we have our own system MAC, our priority, and our timers. And then, at the same time, we have Ethernet 1 slash 1 with the port role of root port and in forwarding state. Now, as I mentioned before, the lowest is preferred. Now there are two links between NX2 and NX3, Ethernet 1.2 and Ethernet 1 slash 3. Now, let's look at the system MAC of both these switches. The system MAC of NX2 is 0CB5, 52BB2C07, whereas the system MAC of NX3 is 03B5, 524C, 6F07. Which one is smaller? See, 52BB is larger value than 524C. So in this case, this is having the lowest system MAC. Since this is having the slowest system MAC, Ethernet 1 slash 2 and Ethernet 1 slash 3 will get into the designated forwarder state. And the port status will be in forwarding. The other side will become an alternate port and it will move to blocking state by the spanning tree protocol or RSTP that we are running here. This is how you can validate the information for late root topology running spanning tree protocol. Let's now go ahead and enable Ethernet 1 slash 4 on both NX2 and NX3. Switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 2,3. And we'll do the same thing on NX3. We go into the config mode, interface Ethernet 1 slash 4. Switch port, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 2,3. And we say no shut. So we have enabled these ports. And let's now go to NX4. Let's look at the VLAN configurations, show run VLAN. Let's configure VLAN 2,3. The same thing on NX5, VLAN 2,3. And we have two interfaces, one connecting the upstream switch and one the link between NX4 and NX5. So we'll do interface Ethernet 1 slash 1 hyphen 2, switch port, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 2,3 and no shut. The same configuration here, interface Ethernet 1 slash 1 hyphen 2, switch port, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 2,3 and no shut. So now we have enabled spanning tree across all the five switches. Let's now look at the state on NX2. Remember, this was the old or previous state that we had. Let's now see what NX2 have now. Show spanning tree VLAN 2. At this point, the spanning tree VLAN 2, the Ethernet 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3 are in their old state, but now Ethernet 1 slash 4 is selected as the designated forwarder. 
And Ethernet 1 slash on, on NX3 shows spanning tree VLAN 2. We have all the ports selected or all the ports in forwarding state. The interface connecting Ethernet 1 slash 4 is selected as the designated forwarder or the designated port. Let's move on to NX4. On NX4, we learn the command show spanning tree VLAN 2. Now on this switch, we have the interface going towards NX2, which is the upstream switch, which will help us reach the root port or the root bridge. That's why the port on this switch, which is going towards the root, is selected as the root port. And it is going to be in the forwarding state. Similarly, on NX5, if we do show spanning tree VLAN 2, the interface connecting the upstream switch is selected as the root port. The interface connecting Ethernet 1 slash 2 or the device connecting NX4 is selected as the designated port. Why? Let's look at the system MAC address of these two switches. The MAC address of NX5 is 0CB5521D E007. And if you look at the system MAC of NX4, it's 0CB5-52AD. Now, 52AD is a bigger value than 521D. Thus, 52, the lowest system MAC of NX5, will be preferred, and this port is selected as the designated port. The other side of the link is moved to blocking state because it moves to, it, the role of the port is selected as an alternate port. So far, we have seen how to configure RSTP, or Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, on Nexus switches. Let's now look at how to configure MST on the Nexus switches. And we'll move back to the demo. For the demonstration purpose, we are again going to shut down the link between NX2, NX4, and NX3, and NX5, just to keep it short. Interface, Ethernet, 1 slash 4. Oh, on NX2, interface Ethernet 1 slash 4, shut down. And on NX3, interface Ethernet 1 slash 4, shut down. So we'll begin with the switch NX1. For multiple spanning tree, we do not need to enable any separate feature. We just need to change the spanning tree mode. So we go ahead and say spanning tree mode MST. Once we have set the mode, the next step we do is we specify the spanning tree instances. So spanning tree MST instance 0 and root, you have an option to sp specify or configure the switch as the primary root or the secondary root. So you can say root primary and then you can say spanning tree MST 1 root primary, and I'll show you why I'm configuring multiple instances. So spanning tree MST2 root primary. So we have configured three instances. Zero is the default one, the MST0, and a spanning tree MST instance one and two will assign different VLANs to both these MST instances. So we now get into the MST configuration mode. We say spanning tree MST configuration. And we are in the spanning tree configuration mode. Uh, we can name the MST configuration, say name MST EXP. And we can say instance one VLAN, say we just add VLAN two to it. And we say instance two VLAN three. So VLAN two that we created earlier is now part of instance one, and VLAN three is now part of the instance two under MST. Now remember, we need to have same configuration under MST. There are other configuration options as well. Since we have made like three instances, let's set the revision number to just say three. We'll now go to NX2 and configure the spanning tree mode. So spanning tree mode MST. And we say spanning tree MST0 root secondary. 
is T0 root secondary. And spanning tree MST1 root secondary. And now we go into spanning tree configuration mode. So once we are in the configuration mode, we can say revision 3 and uh, instance 1 VLAN 2, instance 2 VLAN 3. And we repeat the same configuration. So just to save time, we can say show CLI history unformatted and let's get last 10 configuration commands. So we go here and we get all this information and let's see, do we need um, these two? No, we don't. So we just copy this information, go to NX3 and configure mode MST. And uh, what we do now is just say instance 2 root secondary. So we are setting the secondary root on NX3 for MST2. And for instance 1, we have set NX2 as the secondary root. And rest of the configuration is going to remain the same. So we are just going to paste this configuration. And um, that's it. So now let's look at the output. So if you look at show spanning tree MST configuration, we should be able to see all the configuration done on uh, NX1. So the name we have said is MST EXP, which is an example. Revision 3, instances configured 3, 0, 1, and 2. And we have VLAN 1, instance 1, which is mapped to VLAN 1, and VLAN 4 to 4094. Instance 1 is mapped to VLAN 2, instance 2 is mapped to VLAN 3. So now we can say show spanning tree. And if you look at the total output, we can see the spanning tree protocol is enabled as MSTP. This bridge, this device, or this switch is selected as the root. Remember, the information that you're looking now is for MST instance 0. So this is selected as the root. And also, because of the instance 0, all the ports will be listed here, which will be selected in the designated port role. On MST1, which is having or holding only VLAN 2, it is also the root bridge because we have configured the role primary. And since this is selected as the primary, we have the designated port the designated port, and both the ports are in forwarding state because this is the root bridge. Same goes for MST instance 2. This is the root bridge, and it is selected as the root bridge, and both the ports are in the role designated forwarder or the designated port role. Now let's move on to NX2. On NX2, we look at the configuration using the command show spanning tree MST configuration. And it's the same configuration that we did on NX1 or NX3. Now, let's look at the show spanning tree MST command output. The MST instance 0, we have the root bridge F807, which is selected on NX1 based on our configuration. And it's reachable via Ethernet 1 slash 1. The port connecting the root bridge or the root port role provides the minimum cost path in order to reach the bridge of the MST instance. So this role or this port is selected as the root port role. If we go down to the MST instance 1 and MST instance 2, remember we configured the MST instance 1 to on this switch to be the root secondary. So for root bridge, we see that this switch for MST 1 we are the root bridge for the secondary role. Since the Ethernet 1 slash 1 is connecting the upstream switch, which is NX1, it is set to a master port role. Now, what does the master port role mean? The master port role provides connectivity from a region to a CIST root that lies outside the region. The bridge port that is the CIST root port for the CIST region root is the master port for all MST instances. So this interface is configured as the master role 
on Ethernet 1 slash 1, Ethernet 1 slash 1. On MST in sense 0, remember we configured NX3 as the root secondary. And we are seeing the system MAC of that switch over here. That's why Ethernet 1 slash 2 is now showing the port role as root port. The other port on MST instance 2 is moved to an alternate blocking port. Again, the rule of lowest system MAC will apply here. Finally, moving on to NX3, if we look at the show spanning tree MST configuration, and we move down towards the MST2 instance, we can see that the interface connecting Ethernet 1 slash 1 is selected as an alternate blocking state. Ethernet 1 slash 2 and Ethernet 1 slash 3 are selected as the designated port and in forwarding state because of the lowest system MAC. Remember, in this switch, we configured this switch to be the root secondary for MST instance 2. And that's why we see this output here. For MST instance 1, since Ethernet 1 slash 2 connects to the switch NX2, which is configured as the root secondary for MST instance 1. And it is reachable via Ethernet 1 slash 2. That is why the port Ethernet 1 slash 2 is selected with the root port role. The state of that root port is going to be in forwarding state, and all other ports are going to be in alternate port mode and in blocking state. This is how we can validate the information for both RSTP and multiple spanning tree protocol on Cisco Nexus switches.